Hey guys, this is Zach the Tutor, and today we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about Fischer stratification. So, this is a reaction where it's very important to know for all the pre meds, you know, MCAT, the pre dent, etc., etc. Um, they like to test on this sometimes. So, this reaction involves a carboxylic acid group and alcohol group. Let me write the general formula. So in this reaction, we're making an ester where we have a carboxylic acid group and an alcohol group. Both of them react um, in an equilibrium to make uh, an ester between these two. I color coded it with pencil and uh, black pen to show you where the atoms are coming from. Oh, let me fix this. To show you where the atoms are coming from. Um, let's get to the mechanism and then let's do like an example or two. So for the mechanism, the first step is that Oh, I forgot to mention that we need an acid here. This reaction involves an acid. Right. So the first step is that, let me just draw the reactants really quickly. So we have our carboxylic and then we have our alcohol. And then we have an acid. Then oh or like that so the first step what happens is that this actually the electrons on this carboxylic acid is attracted to the acidic conditions that it is in so it could be sulfuric acid you know um hydrochloric acid but it's not really recommended because it can pro um chlorinate the alcohol and make other side products so probably the cleanest thing you want to use is sulfuric um first thing this thing gets uh, this oxygen on the carboxylic acid gets pro uh, propanated to make us an oxium ion i think that's how you say it uh like that neum ion i haven't finished writing it so the oxium ion goes like this and it has a positive charge so this ion is fair is fairly stable um even though it doesn't because like it's an oxygen why is it stable while it having a positive charge stable because oxygen is a wacky um what do you call it? like a wacky element that resonate a lot so if you see like an odd thing that's stable it's usually the answer is resonance so this thing resonates around and uh, is fairly stable. What happens is that after it's propanated, it can resonate and form this structure, right? So it goes like that. Okay, so it can resonate and form this structure, right? And this is uh, a carbon with a positive charge. It's a very good electrophile. So what happens is that the electrons from the alcohol group, uh, from the oxygen in the alcohol group, hits it from the back, then attaches onto this carbon right here, right? This is our prime. And we form this structure. Now, after we form this structure, this is not electron, this is me trying to erase. Yep, so after we form this structure right here, what happens is the these electrons on the hydrogen bond is given into the, the oxygen here to remove um, this positive charge. If you remember how to do formal charge, look at the bonds and electrons. So one two three four five five and then the amount of valence electrons in the periodic table for um, oxygen is six so six minus five equals 
positive one. So that's the total charge. And if we give the electrons of the hydrogen, we'll have two electrons. So it's going to be one, two, three, and then four, five, six. So six minus six will equal zero. Anyways, this will give us a structure that is uncharged. Right now, we have um, this structure right here. And you see how all of these um, oxygens, these all withdraw electrons from the center. So this makes the carbon slightly unhappy because there's a lot of the electrons being pushed away from it, right? And also when the electrons are pushed away from the center, it means that these bonds right here, this one, this one, and this one are slightly weaker or they're like somewhat weak, they're not the strongest bonds. So what happens is that since we are still in the acidic conditions, um, a hydrogen might, uh, or a proton, an H+, plus, the oxygen electrons on w one of these two um, uh, OH, OH groups or alcohol groups attacks or attaches on a, a proton or an H+, plus, then it gives us this structure. Right? So after we get this structure, this is a very good leaving group. So what happens is that the you see this right here? This is just pretty much water without a, a, a lo another lone pair of electrons. So what happens is that this is a good leaving group, so these bonded electrons right here between the carbon and the oxygen, they go into the oxygen and it makes water, and that goes into solution, leaves. So we get this structure at the end. Right? So after we get this structure, I just moved the R prime group, the low ether group here and just switch it around because you know this is moving around um what happens is that the electrons on here since they all resonate how you see how the oxygen the oxygen just pretty much resonates around the electrons are not like bounded they resonate make different structures so what happens is that the electrons on the lone pair here attaches onto uh, this bond between the oxygen and the carbon, and we make another um, oxanium, uh, what do you call it, ion, right? To form this structure right here that is fairly stable, right? Notice how everything is in equilibrium, because this reaction is, again, in equilibrium. It forms this structure, and this structure has a positive charge on this oxygen right here. So what happens is that usually like uh, a water molecule in solution or if you're using sulfuric acid, like a sulfuric acid ion, like HSO4, something with a negative charge or like water, H2O, see how it has the lone pairs, something that's negatively charged, it will go attack the um, hydrogen the, that that is sticking out and then the the electrons between the oxygen and the hydrogen drop onto the hydrogen. This will give us a neutrally uh, charged, um, what do you call it, uh, compound, right? So let's do formal charge on this thing and then the final product. So oxygen on the periodic table has six valence electrons. Then let's see how many um, electrons we are using. Not fully, but like, we count the electrons um, that are in lone pairs as ones, and then each two electrons that are bonded as one. So one, two, three, four, five, right? So six minus five equals positive one, right? And then when the electrons pop into here, it'll give us extra lone pair, and then it'll make this into a neutral six minus six equals zero. So neutrally charged compound. Finally, this is our final product and voila we got our final product to test the formal charge on any site so 
test to test it on the oxygen here since we did it right here um we get the amount of valence electrons that the oxygen can accept or the oxygen has and then the amount of electrons are used so one two three four five six six minus six equals zero so a perfectly neutral compound um notice how this um reaction is fully in equilibrium so that means that usually when you run it you have to so if you remember from gen chem uh, to push a reaction uh, to the right or to the left, you can decrease the product. So if we decrease this thing, we increase this thing and this reactant. So if we decrease the product, we could increase reactant and our second reacting. And as a whole, we can push the reaction forward. So in this case, if we um, put it in, um, what do you call it? In a condenser where here, I'm going to draw a load diagram. So let's hope my art skills are good. So it goes up here and then drips down onto another flask like that, right with water attached here. So if we connect it to a condenser and with a heating mantle, if we do constant heating, our product that is form, notice how it can't do um, hydrogen bonding because it doesn't have hydrogens. Our reactants has hydrogens. So it can form hydrogen bonds. It will have a lower uh, boiling point. So it will boil off. And all the product that we form, the moment it forms, it boils off. And then ends up in our collecting uh, round bottom or collecting flask. So we push the reaction forward by uh, boiling it and condensing it. And setting up a uh, distillation setup. Anyways, so um, let's do an example. All right. Um, my camera cut off because I love my camera. It's really not my camera's fault. It's my SD card's fault. But it cuts off every 20 minutes. And it cut off in the middle of my example. So I have to reteach it. Which is not a problem because I love you guys. Um, so in my example, I pulled up an acetic acid. And... Uh, good old booze or a thing that makes booze booze ethanol and then we had an equilibrium reaction that we use sulfuric acid for right and we made this lovely ester right here plus water as our byproduct because water is a leaving group in this reaction so the first step is that since we are in acidic conditions, uh, the electrons on the carbonyl group attack a H plus ion or cation in, um, in uh, the solution since it's acidic. And then we make the species called an oxium. I hope I'm saying it right. Oxanium. Uh, there's no lone pair here. Um, species where it's an O, it's an oxygen, the positive charge, it resonates around, so it makes for a better, uh, what do you call it? A uh, more stable compound, right? And when it's more stable, you know, it can exist better, etc. Anyways, when it's positive like that, it could resonate and form this structure. So these electrons can bounce back like that. And you form this structure right here where the alcohol, now the carbonyl turn into an alcohol group. And you would have like two alcohol groups and then the carbon in the middle is positive, positively charged, right? And when this happens, an alcohol group, the alcohol that we use, the ethanol, the oxygens would attack it and form a bond. The oxygen, the lone pair is on the oxygen. And then we form this beautiful species because chemistry is beautiful. Where the positive charge is on the 
the oxygen that we just attacked, right? Uh, one, then two. So it's like that. And then the, the so let's say water in the solution, right? It, will, it, it can attack the hydrogen and pop off these electrons into the oxygen. So it removes or makes the compound more stable and removes the positive charge on the oxygen. And then we get finally this species right here. Um, this is somewhat stable, however, the oxygens uh, are not best th that well bonded to the carbon. The strength of the bond is not that great. Reasoning is that we have one, two, three oxygens pulling their electronegativity uh, outwards. So you have an out outward pull. Thus, uh, this compound could be more stable. And the universe wants to be more stable. That's like kind of general rule, you know, entropy, etc. Anyways, so this is pretty much a great leaving group when it gets protonated. So that's exactly what happens. Uh, the lone pairs on the this oxygen right here attacks the H plus in the acidic conditions. And we get this species right here where get this species where this is positively oh what's true sorry like that this is positively charged there's no lone pair here this is positive charge and the quality of my drawings are decreasing by the second so apologize for that anyways we get this species where it's positively charged and then it can easily since it's pulling electrons outwards it can easily break this bond give its electrons into the oxygen and then form this species right here right And when this species form, uh, the, the electrons that are on this oxygen, it, it resonates around. So it can resonate into this carbon right here and make a double bond and turn it into carbonyl group. However, it's going to be positively charged. It's going to be positively charged. And when it's positively charged, a species in solution, so if we're using sulfuric acid, uh, this ion could grab onto this oxygen, pull it out, and then these electrons that are bonded between the oxygen and the hydrogen could pop into the oxygen, and we form our final product, which is this beautiful ester compound. right here um thank you guys for watching i will put some uh practice problems in the description they're probably not going to be mine etc uh, if you have any questions ask them in the comments and i'll try to answer them thank you guys for being great and uh good luck with your studies